Hello and welcome to Lord Lucan and for the return of the lock-up love during style. Oh my God! We'll be meeting Diva Necker, aka Renika Hayes. I have not met a in person. Then it all gets a bit. It's a sucker, mate. Then we get to know Jade. I'm wearing that jewelry that you just bought me. And then it all gets a bit. Red flag, red flag. And we're back and about bloody time to. Welcome drinks to the beautiful people who have subscribed and an extra attention from Zeus the Masseuse to the members of the Lucan Manor. So get ready for some new faces, same old stories, and plenty of hang on a second moments as we hit the latest season of Love During Lockup. Right, first new face. And she answers the question, what happens when baby hairs grow up and it's time for them to go and get their own place? I'm nervous and told my dad about Asante. So this is Vanika and Asante. I have not met Asante in person. Asante is... Nah, who cares? Let's go have a look at Vanika. A.K.A. Diva Nika. A.K.A. Big Diva. A.K.A. Fetishes by Nick. So her alter ego, Diva Nika, is, by most appearances, a pretty legit rapper. Let's take a look at one of her videos. Can't fudge with me. It's got a pretty reasonable 10k views in the 8 months it's been up, which included some scenes from her kitchen. <laughs> Gonna tidy it up a bit. She's even left a leg hanging around. And I've got to say, I can't keep my eyes off something in this scene. I've got a fireplace like that. But behind everything, big diva, there's a super duper crew. Let's go check out hers. It's a sucker mate. Ooh, there's a mean looking crew. Ready to bang a few gangs? Not exactly the most threatening group of people ever. This guy can't even see you. This one looks like Stevie Wonder's kid. Damn, this one who's carrying a strap like a handbag. Yeah, she's totally seesawed and held one of those before. And here too. <laughs> this guy still, <laughs> this guy still can't see a damn thing. And neither can little denim over there. Whoopi Wonder is having the best day ever. They had to cut the budget on the cash gun though. So they, <laughs> so this one only had one note to wave around. But Ghetto Terminator is back and has managed to not accidentally vaporize the back row with a rather high powered firearm she's been given to hold. <laughs> Man, who'd be nerdy enough to actually count the $3,480 they used to make that word? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, not me, I wouldn't do that. And who'd be curious enough to check out the fridge? Ooh, live like the gate was left open. Yeah, she's a bit more like live like the legs were. <coughs> anyway, in this scene, she's clearly just about to make some Jiffy's honey flavored corn muffins. Ooh. There's been some successful cooking going on in this pot. But she's not getting so many hits on YouTube yet. Her channel's only 147 subs at the time of making this, but I'm pretty sure that'll change as the season goes on. She's got a SoundCloud where she promotes her pretty entertainment under her real name, Bonica Hayes, and a track featuring her daughter. She's got an Amazon Music listing without anything on it, and a BandLab page. Although Renika doesn't pay the bills with hope and fantasy, not like some other rappers. She's also the owner of Fetishes, 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 Fetishes by Neek, where she sells mink eyelashes from her vending machines. But if you Google Fetishes and vending machines, you do get some mighty fruity results. Anyway, that was a quick little intro to her so far. Then there's Jade and Chris, but I don't like Jade. She looks like a cross between Cher and Katy Perry and has the presence of an 80s bad boss. And Chris looks like Brian Brown. You ready for the big time young Mr. Flanagan? But Jade is one of those fave hungry TikTokers. Her 308,000 followers seem to like her. Hang on a second. She's got a consistently low 3% engagement rating, which means... I go live and show what I got. Yeah, no one cares. And Chris is a native Indian. Clearly. Well, he is part of an Indian family. He is him with his granddad. They're from the Prairie Island, Midawakaton, Dakota tribe, and they own the Mystic Lake Casino in Minnesota. In fact, Midawakaton tribe are one of the wealthiest, and they've got another casino called the Little Six. They earn about a billion dollars a year, which is distributed amongst the 500 or so tribe members. So he gets lots of money from them, and that totally has nothing to do while Jade's staying with him. Red flag, red flag. We've got Lorik and Brittany, who speaks five times faster than people can listen. I don't want to be with nobody, I'm not even gay. Then there's Tay too, Letitia. Oh my god. And her man Keith. Keith? Really? Could have given him a slightly more street name. Hey Letitia, let me introduce you to my friend, Cuthbert. But Letitia's going to be seeing a fair bit of another man. Have you ever looked up the word conspiracy? Panty dropper. There's a Savannah and Jake. He's crazy. Like, nuthouse borderline. And another bloody Brittany. 
who's landed herself an ex-cop called Andy. So all in all, a bit of a mix. A cop, a flop and a Cherokee. Right then, let's see what the rest of the episode is in store for us. First up, it's... Oh, oh, bloody hell, it's Jade. Fine, here we go. So, Jade Chips, over in England we call her Jade Crisps, is a former flight attendant and social media influencer. Who the hell is she influencing? And what the hell is she influencing? Living your life with your rich boyfriend while he's in jail? She uploads stuff about prison, trying on tight gym gear, and incessantly posting about her man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, great. He looks Asia and she looks like she's been hit by a car. But the picture shows you how different she looks today. Hey, Jade. How did you meet? Yeah, I just... I think it'd be cool to do, like, a pen pal thing. Ah, uh, well, I see. Then it was love at first sight of his bank balance, as he turned out to be making tens of thousands a month. I'm wearing that jewellery that you just bought me. Yeah, because that sweetened the deal a bit, I guess. That Brian Brown-looking mofo suddenly got super attractive, didn't he? How is someone this handsome in prison? Like, it blew my mind. Oh, really? That's weird. We don't look up attractive people in England, you see. Just those mingers clogging up the street with all their ugly. Then we give them a music career as part of their rehabilitation. And that Ed Sheeran's let himself go a bit. So Chris calls and they talk about stuff and act like they might have some kind of fun dynamic. <laughs> and Jade says this. Hanging out with my friends, but probably like an hour. Okay, so let that hang there for a second. She says he's with her mates, but he can call in an hour. Okay, pretty clear. Call you in an hour, please answer. Anyway, Jade is having a party for her sister Jessica's 30th birthday. And she's very busy doing very busy stuff to prepare. Did you cut up the tomatoes? I did. I put them over there. Yeah, you. This party's not going to hang its own crappy spinny things on lampshades, you know? Well, I'm busy trying to look pretty and not look uncomfortable in this expensive dress that I've got. Come on, Mum. Put me back into it. <laughs> we also have balloons, oh, Lord. too. All right. Hang on a second. Are those flowers the ones she bought back in July 2021? Bloody hell, they've lasted well. Those will be the Aqua Rose in a classic black large round box for around $400. I thought they'd not be so great after two years, but apparently they're eternity flowers and last a year or more. They're just like mogwais. Don't put them in direct sunlight, don't get them wet, and don't feed them after midnight or you'll have a bunch of marauding flora. So, Jada's two sisters, Jessica and Joanna. We call ourselves the Jardashians. Well, there's no surprise there, is it? <laughs> From one vacuous attention seeker to another. Then she gives herself away a little. It goes into our joined account, so I have access to it. Did you see her lean back and shut off eye contact there? She gives us a whole bunch of body language. Let's watch that clip again. Joined account, so I... She reenacted here, and she talks about the bank and relives the reaction to seeing the money, or at least the balance, which was initially startling to see on an ATM, presumably, as she's looking downwards. Then she says... Have access to it. That word access sent her whole body into stress. She closed her eyes and even shrugged her shoulders. She'd sat there totally still until this point. So what does that tell us then, beautiful viewer? Why don't you let me know your thoughts in the comments below? So the girls go out to the bar for a chat. Why, if he has money, did he steal? I guess they call that when I own a rider syndrome. I feel like a sentence was a little harsh, but... Well, let's see what we think about that. He got 32 years for burglarizing a couple, one of whom had leukemia, and even stole her experimental medication while they were sitting there watching TV. Then he went and used their cards to steal all their cash. Uh, oh, and according to Starkasm, the week prior, he'd even stolen the car from a man who interviewed him for a job. Hmm, lovely guy. But he is also a uh, multiple offender. Seven times, in fact. The guy's also got three kids, Gavin and Caden, who live with his ex-wife from Reliance, and a daughter, Michaela, who lives with an ex called Irene. I'm gonna change him, I could fix him. Uh, famous last words in a highly emotional, tumultuous relationship. Men aren't projects, you know. You don't have to change our tires. Well... Unless you're Stephen Hawkins' wife. Anyway, Jade gives the truth another bash. That's our ultimate goal, is to be together. Blimey, if there was some flinching going on last time, her stress levels are veritably seismic, talking about forever love. To be together. She wants to go easy with all this truth going on. She'll do herself some damage. To be together. So, Jade breaks out the fizz. Stop, carry on! And everyone comes over to get shit-faced on Chris's money. Good job. 
It's probably been about an hour or so by now, probably. Do you remember that thing that we were remembering earlier? Hanging out with my friends, but probably like an hour. Now, I get the impression he's a bit clingy. Maybe because it's the emotional security he's getting when he's locked up and thinking too much. Or maybe he's just a bit suffocating generally and makes up for it with expensive gifts and promises. I guess we'll have to see how things progress. But I'm an actual cynic. Anyway, the next part plays out like this. Chris calls. Jade ignores it. Jade's sister gets some attention. Chris calls. Jade makes a grab for the attention with that thing she does on TikTok. She brings this thing out all the damn time. I'd get so bored of seeing it if I was her mate. You'd pop round for a coffee and, ooh look, guess who it is? Eh, uh, eh, uh, can't imagine. You'd be sick of the sight of him before he's even got out of prison. Anyway, where were we? Oh yes, Chris calls. Jade shows her dad what her butt looks like. Chris calls. Drunk white girl dancing. Chris calls. Then the sister says, He has this issue where he can't trust her. Can't trust or won't trust. That's an interesting idea and I'm gonna have to wait to see which one he is. Finally, Jade answers the phone. What the hell, I'm trying to call you. Now he must know she's in a room full of people due to the noise. And the appropriate thing to do when you've got issues to settle is to do it privately. Particularly when there's somebody's sister's 30th birthday party. But things don't mean anything to this guy. We can see that in his criminal past. Taking other people's stuff, and in his approach to splashing the cashing on keeping Jade, a thing like a birthday is not as important as his needs. So why wouldn't he just patronizingly publicly correct her? I mean, I don't really know what to tell you. Then he starts down this line. Clearly, you know, drinking is going to be an issue if you can't answer the phone while you're drinking. Well, maybe your face is going to be an issue for my phone. If you're going to be talking to me like that. So is the next step to control her drinking? To stop her drinking unless she's with you? This smells very much like coercive behavior beginning to be formed here. But if I'm busy, like, what do you expect me to do? Okay, one very small thing on Chris's side. She did say it was okay for him to call in an hour and then ghosted him. If she said, Hanging out with my friends. Followed by, it'll be quite loud, so why don't I give you a call later tonight when things calm down? Then he could say, cool, I look forward to it. Have fun. Then they'll live happily ever after. Thanks for watching. Stay beautiful, love to- No, of course it didn't go like that. She said- Maybe you should just stop calling so much. Then he said- You have reached the voice mailbox of- Well then, my little cherubs, that's about it for this episode. There's much more to come, so check back soon for more. In the meantime, why not check out one of these little beauties? So until we meet again, stay beautiful, love to my three. You take care of yourself.